Hi, welcome to the Christian Indie Writers Podcast, where we inform, encourage, and support Christian indie writers on the journey to publication. I'm Christina Katane, and I write in multiple genres, including Christian dystopian fiction. I'm Jennifer Carl Tong, and I write historical Christian romance. I'm Jamie Hirschberger. I write short fiction under the pen name J.R. Nichols. I'm Rhonda Hagerman, and I write fiction and nonfiction under the pen name D.D. Bowman. Welcome to the podcast where sometimes we forget that we're the host. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes we're thankful that we are not the host. <laughs> and we're, we're waiting for someone else to say something when we realize, <laughs> hey, it's all me. <laughs> <That's the best. laughs> it's in so, one of those mornings, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I just want to thank everybody for watching, um, especially those for tuning in Um live and joining in on our chat. We really love our chat. If you have a chance, if you can't watch us live and you can have a chance to go back and look at our YouTube channel and check out the chat, it's like we have things to say that are helpful, but the chat is so helpful. Awesome. Agreed. Mm -hmm. And we also want to thank all of our listeners on iTunes or any of the other platforms. We make our audio available um, and whatever platform you're on or you're using, if you could like us, subscribe, hit bells, just hit all the buttons. <laughs> um, that would really make us happy. <laughs> and you can also go over to our website and subscribe to our newsletter to ensure you never miss a single episode of the Christian Indie Writers Podcast. But don't do it today because the site is down. <laughs> because we just had to change hosting. So give it a couple days. What yeah, you we could do, though, is go follow us on Twitter because we have been on the cusp of 600 followers for like ever. And I certainly would love to see us you know, finally get at least 600 followers. It's been kind of all organic. It's not been a follow, follow back kind of a thing, but um, it would just do us really good to see that we're growing. So spread the word, tweet, retweet, follow us. Speaking yes. of the word, let's check in with our chat. We have Piper. Good morning, Piper. Good morning. Jason's here. Yay. Hey, Jason. <laughs> Shell says hi. hi. Leah's here. Hey, says Leah. hello. Alex says, good morning. good morning. And she says, I'm driving, but I wanted to come because I won't be able to watch live for a while. I'm going back to work next week. Oh, well, happy oh. and sad. Yeah, right? She's I mean, a teacher, school. so yeah. got to go back to school. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so we like to start each episode with a thing we call What's Up? And as the name implies, we're just going to go around and say what's up with each of us. So let's start with Rhonda. <laughs> Hmm. Well, um, uh, my what's up is uh, I've been editing this week and I've been working on house improvement this week. And today was the day that I was going to be able to start on my gardens. And very appropriately because of our sprint today, it is a downpour. It is raining so hard today and it's supposed to rain almost all day. So I'm so disappointed that my gardening is going to be postponed probably at least a day or two. So um, your cistern situation, does that like uh, get impacted by all of this tremendous amount of rain or? Well, no, actually, because we have created a trap door that goes over it. So it's about a 10 foot section or so that we can take the decking off um, when we're digging. So uh, wow, safe. you have prepared for everything. Yes. <laughs> yes yeah. Absolutely. Whenever I hear about heavy rains in Michigan, I think about people's basements and their sump pumps and all of that kind of stuff. So certainly I am praying for you all up there. Good night. Thank you. We always get a lake in our basement when it rains like this. Oh. Ugh. Okay, Jennifer, what about you? What's up with you? Well, you might have noticed that I have a new oh. Yes. That's why you were missing the podcast. You were like doing a side hustle to be able to buy that new microphone. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully this will take care of all the problems I've had with um, like the that static that would start. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it was my headphones and not the jack we're hoping. Mm -hmm. um, but my, my what's up is that I um, was putting this all together last night and um, Tina was available to for help me test it out. And this, um, the boom, the boom, which is his arm here, wasn't they it was not made right. It didn't match the picture. It said it was supposed to have this thing that was the, the silver thing. So I'm like, oh, the silver thing must be separate. I looked all through the box. It wasn't there. So a couple weeks ago I'd ordered the same setup, but it, they forgot to put the mic in. So I couldn't just 
they couldn't just send me a mic. I had to return all that and order the whole set again. Like it's Aww. dumb. So that's why it took me so long. But anyways, I hadn't returned it yet. So I went upstairs. I'm like, I'm just gonna grab that one. I opened it up. Same thing. It was exactly the same way. There wasn't the extra piece. Um, so I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna use this little. There was like a little chintzy stand that came with the mic. I'll just use that tomorrow, and I'll I'll call tech support when I can after the podcast. In the middle of the night, I woke up, and clear as day, God, I know it was God, <laughs> showed me a picture in my head. Showed me it, and <laughs> I had this end stuck into this over here, and I had this oh. end. I had it back. <laughs> oh my! And praise God. <laughs> He pointed out to me <laughs> so that I didn't look like a fool to this tech support as I'm like, because I was getting mad that I was on my second one and it wasn't made right and they didn't send me all the parts. And all I did was I had it backwards. Shell, so here I am, uh, but it works now. So I'm really great. Shell says you sound like butter. And I totally oh, agree. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Your voice yes. sounds so beautiful. Now you see yeah. why you had a job in radio uh, mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. The night... Uh, this is one of my pairs from radio too, because my daughter kind of took them over. And the nice thing is with the headsets, you cannot hear yourself. You hear yourself because you're talking, but you don't hear the mic feedback in your headsets, which you do in radio. Um, and this goes straight into the microphone and I can hear myself, but this, these are broken. That said, I, um, I ordered didn't come yet. It's only one ear. I can't wait for both ears to be in here, but it does. It makes a difference when you can hear your own voice. You speak differently. Like, or I guess it's frightening to me. Well, it's probably because I'm trained. So because I'm trained, I'm like, oh, now I feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So awesome. anyway, that's my what's up. Piper says her what's up. I published my book three. <gasps> I know <gasps> that. <gasps> Very excited. Yay. That's so awesome. A series no. is a coup for sure. For sure. So now she's trying to figure out a way to wrap it up in the fourth book because I've got a great idea for the next series. <gasps> oh, so exciting. Lots mm -hmm. of congrats going. Um, Jason says his what's up started trying to set writing goals for each day. Last week, he won $300 from for Seriously? two young writing competitions. That's amazing. That's cool. Congratulations. Yes. And I know Jason's been wondering uh, how to proceed with his writing. So I'm glad to see he's still plugging away. Agreed. Uh, Leah says, what's up? Still in the midst of a monster edit, trying hard not to hit the dreaded burnout, needing prayer and a clone. <laughs> My house is a disaster. <laughs> so. I hear you. When I get going really good with my writing, my house is disaster. And let me just say, my house is not a disaster right now. So that should tell you something. But we'll save that for the what's next. Yeah, my husband said to me, Wow, you you have so much more energy. Look how clean the house is. <laughs> like, yeah, that's because I'm not writing. <laughs> <laughs> I took a week off. So, writing um, avoid cleaning to avoid writing is a real thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. If that's what I'm doing, but it sure is getting clean. <laughs> <laughs> cleaning is like my least favorite thing on the planet. Well, no, I take that back. The dentist and then cleaning. Oh. Okay, so I'll go next. Um, I have I had an interesting week. Number one is I uh, my daughter's birthday is in is this month. My son Chris just turned eighteen yesterday. Wow, your youngest, right? Yes, he's my mm. last baby. Mm. So it was a very bittersweet kind of day. Um, so now he's a, an adult. I'm no longer responsible. <laughs> anyway, um, and my daughter um, in two weeks is turning an age she probably doesn't want me to repeat in her 30s. <laughs> and um, I bought her a one on one coaching session with Becca Syme for her birthday. Oh, how nice. Yeah. And she's doing that on September 1st. So, like, I'm like so totally having FOMO. I wish I could go with her to her house and be like in the background listening to everything. <laughs> Unfortunately, can't do that. Aww. So, and then I was talking to our friend Vicky, who's in our writing group um, this week, and she mentioned that she grew up in Staten Island, and she hadn't mentioned that before. But I said to her, "Well, do you know any?" And I'm not going to say the last name because I, my family um, wants their privacy. But my maiden name, I, I asked her. She goes, "Oh yeah, there's a Richard that I went that was in my class in school." I'm like, oh, well, I have a cousin named Richard. And so we went and looked, mm -hmm. and it was him. And so they went to school together. And then we figured out that her father lives 0.2 miles from my aunt and uncle. 
That's on so... Staten Island, which Staten what? Island is a small place geographically, but it's ton millions of people. Like the chances of two people on Staten Island knowing each other, like create. I was just, it was just. We decided that we would have been best friends if my <laughs> when my dad when my dad retired from the Navy when I was five years old, he was offered a job that he accepted and he would have been working on the hundredth floor of the world trade center and we would have moved to New York, but 30 minutes before his ceremony, mobile oil called him and offered him a job to stay in Alaska. And so we stayed in Alaska. So if that, if things had been different, we probably would have been best friends. That's what we've decided. <laughs> so that's my, what's up. It has nothing to do with writing, but there you go. <laughs> what's ups don't have to be right i was That's just gonna right. say do they have to have something to do with writing because if so well i guess i could make a weird connection well we writing. are in the same writing group yes there Vicky we go is an original member of flaws the fellowship for the ladies in accountability and writing and society <laughs> yeah gee who came up with that name <laughs> the only person who remembers what it means <laughs> all right jamie what's up with you um, well, I just would like to hear from the members of our chat if they have the earworm phenomenon, <laughs> do, 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 the way that I phenomena. Get it. Um, yes, exactly. So mm -hmm. the the thing is, we used to I used to teach an improv class, and it's like, oh, say your name and like a descriptive word, and I never thought to be like jukebox Jamie because I promise you, in my head always is like a song. And people say a word, <laughs> and then the song comes into my head. And lately, it's been because Namecheap is our host for our website and my website. And every time I hear Namecheap, the song Main Street by Bob Seger plays in my head. And um, then it does not want to go away forever. I can play it, sing it, listen to it. And then that's just the track that is in my head. But easily replaced by a different song. Um, that that just pops in there because someone will say a word or will trigger something in my mind. And I wondered, um, how special am I? Probably not. I just wondered if there are other people where this happens to them. Um, we were talking a little bit among us three or us four. What do you what do you ladies say about that? Well, well Jamie, the first thing I have to say is you are my jukebox hero. Oh, just so sweet. Now that song's in my head. <laughs> I was saying earlier, I was telling the ladies earlier that every time I have to go to the bathroom, oh, no. um, the song from Daniel Tiger that my granddaughter listens to over and over and over again that says, if you have to go potty, stop and go right away. It's a little song to teach potty training <laughs> every single time. gets stuck in my head. <laughs> It looks like uh, Leah is simpatico, but Piper says it sounds really annoying and she can't even remember lyrics to songs she's known forever. So oh, you don't have to know the lyrics for it to happen because it happens to me <laughs> and I don't know the lyrics. And so that's even worse because you might know a word or two and then it's still in your head. And then you try to like figure out what the song is and try to tell someone else so they can help you so you can find the song. But you don't know all the lyrics and you tell the lyrics you think that that you that they are and they look at you like this. And so it's even worse. So. Yeah. But Jamie taught me something a long time ago, well, not a long time ago, but that if you have a song stuck in your head, go listen to it or sing the whole thing through so that your brain can turn it off. Your brain needs to finish the song. And I thought, oh, okay, but no, it works. Whenever I have a song stuck in my head, because it's always like one line because I don't know the lyrics. <laughs> so it's always just one line over and over and over again. But if I listen to it, it actually gets out of my head. It's very good advice. It's incredibly terrible that you can squirrel yourself with your own brain because someone will be talking to me and they'll say, oh, you know, name cheap is down. And all of a sudden in my mind, do, 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 do. And like my brain wants to take me into Bob Seger world and I have to pull myself back. So um, yeah, that's my what's up. Nothing okay. to do with writing. Seems to be the, the thing for today. Okay, so let's transition. Is there anything in the chat that we need to say about anybody's what's up? Well, lots of congratulations for Piper and for Jason. Those are huge wins. I mean, getting yes. a book published, that's what we're all about here. And winning money in a writing contest, that's tremendous. That's so, a lot of book sales, $300. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm just saying. Okay, so we're going to transition then into today's topic that we are calling Back Matter Matters. So who wants to tackle the definition of back matter? Well, in its simplest form, the back matter is the interior of your book that comes after you write the end. So after the actual novel part of your book, it's everything that's inside your book that comes after that. So like acknowledgments, which can also be at the front. They don't have to be in the back. Um, your author bio, uh, links to your next book or other books. You have to be careful uh, there because um, some platforms will reject you if you just link to Amazon, like your Amazon author page. You can't do that. Right. So the workarounds for that are what, what are, how do you do it, Jamie? Um, well, I have universal book links that, you know, you can link to um, promote other books that you have. Draft to Digital does that for free. So um, everyone would have to go and kind of like just poke around and figure out how to do that. But um, it's the UBL or Universal Book Link where you can link people to the next book in your series or to another book that you would like them to be interested in. Draft to Digital has a sister website called Books to Read, the number two. So it's books, the number two, read.com. And you can go there and for free, you can create universal book links. So then what you do, what Jamie's talking about is you'd put your books in and it'll, you either put the actual link to the different storefronts or it'll search for you. And then um, it'll create a one link to, that you can put in the back of the book for people to click to, which takes it to this like little website page with a picture of your book and then all the links that they can click on, um, which is really great. But the other option is you can just do it on your own website, you know, then that would bring traffic to your website. So you can create a page on your website that would have, uh, if you go to my website, I do the, I do have universal book links, but also if you go to my website, there's a page for each of my books. If you go to them, there's the links for you to purchase them. So that works too. What is your website, Jen? It is Jennifer Carl Tong. <laughs> dot com just like we just the spelling like this but no spaces or hyphens one but yeah, and Jennifer, two l's one and two l's and i also have a pay hip store um really? for people that want to buy the book directly from me we need to have an episode on that because direct sales is a whole new thing well for me it's a whole new thing but i think that we need to have a conversation on that so i'm glad I, you and have i that. need to probably research something whatever i need to change about my store because I have over 300 views and no sales. Mm. So, but I do have a pay hip store that, so if you click buy now on my website, it takes you to my store and I get everything. There is no cut for anybody. You don't have to pay pay hip a small percentage? No. Really? Interesting. Um, All right. Let's and have a what whole is pop. your website? <laughs> ChristinaCatane.com, which is also down at the moment because I also had to change the hosting for it at the same time we changed our podcast website. So give it a few days. So universal book links, a link to your link to your own website with all the links. Those are two ways of um, solving that problem. Another solution, if you use Vellum, Vellum automatically does this for you. So when you are formatting your book and you do a um, any sort of like buy page or whatever, um, Vellum will um, give will generate each of the different versions that you need to upload. It'll give the right version, the right link. And the reason why this is important is if you have a book up on Amazon, they don't want any links leading to anywhere but themselves for obvious reasons. Barnes and Noble is the same thing. They all want you people only to be taken. And plus too, if I am a, um, a Kobo reader, and I'm exclusively Kobo, I don't use Amazon. I don't want to click on a link and be taken to a website that I'm not going to use anyway. That's going to annoy me as a reader. So that's another reason why you want to make sure you do that. So Leah says what? she hasn't touched her website in years and she's ashamed, but I want to tell her, girl, you are having success without having your website be up to the minute, up to date. Don't, don't let somebody else having their website updated make you feel mm -hmm. like you're doing something quote unquote wrong. It's not right. necessary for everybody to have an updated website. Right. Or this could just be the motivation, like what Piper says. Oh, this is a reminder to update my website with the newest book. Maybe well, this is just motivation go. to go look at it, you know, yeah. and, and do some right. stuff. And you if you only have so much room on your plate, I mean, 
There's just so much to do. You can't do everything. I know. Wasn't right. she the one saying that she's like experiencing overwhelm and burnout? The last thing she needs is to also be worrying about her website. Good night. Right. right. Exactly. What else do you guys do you lay in the back of your books? Request for a review. Oh, yes. That's a Jeez. good one. Yeah. Because sometimes that's all it takes is someone's like, oh, you want a review? Some people like just don't realize that they should do reviews. And just a simple ask sometimes makes a big difference. Right. And and I don't think people, I don't think readers understand how valuable reviews are to authors. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, I've even told people, I think, you know, I had my first book out and um, I had like three reviews on Amazon and I was telling people, look, um, the review's worth more to me right now than the cost, the money that you're paying for the book. That's why I'm giving it away for free to people who will leave a review. Mm -hmm. Because that review is worth way more than that little bit of a royalty right now. You know they're great so about important. I'm Go sorry ahead. to interrupt you. Um, Shell is terrific about reviews. She is very faithful to review the books that she reads. And they're yes. always really thorough and terrific. So I just wanted to say thank you to her for doing that for the writers that she supports. Mm -hmm. Yes. Along with the request for review, I also put um, a newsletter sign up. Some, I, there was a question posted in one of the Christian writing groups I'm in, in on Facebook, and the person wanted to know um, what the number, what social media outlet is, do they sell the most books on? I'm like, none. So, but I was polite and I said, um, my newsletter, that, that is the number one thing that I've done that will sell. Only two of us answered, and I think we both said newsletter, and the, the gentleman wanted to know, how do you get newsletter signups? That's like a whole big conversation, but I just kind of like yeah. laid it out how I did it, like kind of like quickly. And then I explained to him that, and I realized like now it's mostly um, organic for me because I've sold enough books. I have enough. Um, I have my first book as perma free. So that brings enough people in that most of my signups are coming from people who read my books. And if I didn't put that at the back, there would be hundreds of newsletter subscribers that I wouldn't have if I hadn't put that at the back of my book. So make sure you and do that's, that. And that's um, so effective because here's a person that already has read something that you wrote and liked it enough to go sign up for your newsletter. Mm -hmm. So your chances of making a sale to them when you say, I have a new book coming out are so much greater than putting a post on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or, you know, to people that might not be interested. Right. Agreed. We should have a whole episode about newsletter signups. That's a whole other. Yeah, we should. Um, what else? I kind of skim. I kind of skimmed through the first couple just because I was just like, I don't know where why I was doing that. But um, let's go back up real quick as to acknowledgments. They can come at the beginning, but uh, I think acknowledgments are important somewhere in your book. I do them at the back because there are people in your life that have helped you get this book out there. And it's not just writing friends. It's not just your editor. Like your, you know, your family helps support you. If they don't, don't put them in there. But, um, I have, um, a friend that does my copy editing, Jamie, you guys know, is my editor, but she, a friend that does my copy editing just because she loves to read my books. And I always make sure that I put an acknowledgement in there for her. And it means something to her. She's not an author. She's not in that world. And just the fact that there's a you know book with her name in the back thanking her that like she has really let me know how much that means to her. So you'll be surprised how that impacts the people in your life when you do that. Um, oh. I just wanted to point out that Leah says she puts um, extra character um, descriptions and bonuses. Like uh, she said exactly, I have an extensive character list, book list, and a bio. So um, that's kind of neat if you yeah. have, she has like a pretty extensive series. I think she's nine or 10 books in and mm -hmm. she lists out all of her characters, which I think is pretty cool because it can cement in the mind of the reader that they're in it for the long haul with your series. So if you're a series writer, I think that's a terrific idea. And I believe she, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe she does write some fantasy. And I know in fantasy books, that's really, she doesn't. Okay. I'm wrong then. I don't, but I know I don't in know. fantasy books, it's very common to have character right. lists. 
I was just thinking, not that you want to go over to your website right now. I'm not trying to pressure you in that area, but how great would it be? Like there's some fodder for you right there mm -hmm. to put on your website, your characters. Yeah. You could do little bios about each one of them and that will bring people, you know, put links to the back of your book and that'll bring people to your website. Yeah, I'm actually thing. playing with that right now. Oh, there she are says dystopian, of, Tina. Oh, okay. There Sorry, are a go bunch ahead, of um, wiki plugins that you can use on your blog to make that easier, make an easier process. Hmm. For oh. character bios and that sort of thing. So you oh. have your own little wiki. That's yeah, it's cool. like an encyclopedia of your books, especially if you have your series. Mm -hmm. It really helps you um, not plot it out, but keep everybody straight. And um, So you do that people. on your website or it's on a wiki website? No, I'm playing with it right now on my blog. Gotcha. And I'm using, there are four or five different uh, wiki plugins that I played in. And I don't really have a favorite right now because they've all got something a little bit different. That so is hilarious. cool. There's Sorry, another topic I'm... idea. All right. That's, a, that's in the work for the future too. But How about um, just defining the words wiki and plug in for like the brand oh. new people. I mean, if you have like a drag and drop website, you might not even know what a plug in is. But if you do, those mm -hmm. can be really useful for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You guys, Piper Aww. has put this podcast in the acknowledgments of her last two books. That is so Aww. sweet. That means a lot. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Piper. Thank you, Piper. Oh. That's so awesome. Sometimes it feels like we're just, i we love our chat and you guys are here and you chat with us, but sometimes it feels like we just like, we're just doing this, right? Are we helping anyone? Well, we're just still doing it, but that <laughs> means, no, I mean that seriously. Like I know it, it sounds dumb, but like, like, are we really helping anyone? And the fact that you did that means all the world to us. Thank you so much. Yes. So. Yeah. Aww. Okay. So do we want to say anything further about the author bio that we put in the back of our book? Um, add a picture. I know everyone like doesn't want their picture out there, but we had a whole episode not that long ago about photographs. <laughs> and if you do it yourself, you can like keep working at it till you get exactly what you want, but put a picture because super fans really want to know what you look like. Super fans want you to be a real person, not just some name on the cover. So I say do that and then read books that you like fan, the people that you're fans of and see how they write theirs and mimic it. There's a gazillion different ways to do author bios. It could be funny. It could be just really short and sweet. I mean, there's lots of different ways. So it look at your genre. whole life story like mine. Yeah. So <laughs> look around and, and see what you enjoyed reading about the people that you're a fan of and then just mimic it. That's what I would do. That's what I did. Okay. Okay. So then the next thing that we had was discussion questions. Mm, Anybody yes. want to tackle that topic? Well, if you've written a book that you think might be a good candidate for like a woman's book club, read a chapter and then get together to discuss it. Um, why not uh, add and encourage that behavior by having discussion questions available for your book? Um, maybe it's something no one would have ever thought of before, but there is the availability to order multiple copies from Amazon.com, for instance, and mm -hmm. it might be a really new and fresh way to market your book to people, um, especially if you're a Christian writer and you think that your book uh, tackles some topics that would be um, interesting for women who are of a book group mentality. I have difficulty doing this. Once I'm done, I don't know what to discuss. It's, I think I'm too close to it. And I have this idea. I have not broached the subject with my friend, but I have a friend who um, is an avid Christian romance reader, but she's not someone that ever could would edit. Like she doesn't, she doesn't have that skill, but I've considered asking her because I, I gave her an advanced copy of um, my most recent book um, because I wanted to make sure that I was on target with you know, cause she knows the genre so well. And I thought about asking her because I know her prayer life. I know her Bible study life, asking her to come up with some discussion questions for me. Um, and so I think that if it's, if you're like me and you're struggling, you might be able to find someone in your life that that's a gift of theirs that you could maybe include them in your process. It's an idea. My daughter um, has plans to write a devotional book mm. to go along with my book. Uh, she just hasn't had time because of her job right now, but um, the meeting with Becca might change all that. Yeah, it could. Uh -huh. Yeah. Piper, so maybe uh, we'll have one soon. 
Leah says, seriously considering a serious companion Bible study journal discussing the topics in my series. Also want to do a cookbook companion. Yeah, those are great ideas in yeah. our genre. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, like the cookbook thing too, because of the jo- the time setting and that mine are specific to Michigan. I thought about doing a cookbook too. It's such a great idea. And then Piper says, I was just needing to get it out. Should have a file of stuff I stick at the back of every book. Maybe that's what I do. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I'm, go ahead, Jamie. I just wanted to commiserate because I've got um, five short stories published right now. Two are longer than the rest, which are actually available in print. Um, but anyway, I don't think any of my back matter matters right now because I, like Piper, was just in a publishing mindset and not in a marketing one. And mm-hmm. just the ideal of pulling them all down, fixing the back matter, and then republishing is so like blah to me. But I do feel like it is important enough to do, and I'm going to have to make the time to do it because who knows what kind of sales opportunities I'm missing out from a quote unquote hot lead who's already read something of mine that they like. So I'm in the same boat as you, Piper. I just wanted to commiserate. Yeah. And what I do is I have in vellum and you can do this wherever you, um, wherever you do your, um, formatting. Formatting. Thank you. (laughs) Um, I have, it's already set there and all I have to do is go and update it, uh, when I add a new book. So the nice thing about the way I have, a, I'm going to be having it set up actually is like, so books by Jen will be a link so that I only have to s- update it on my website as opposed to doing that. So the print version will have, I will go in and update all of the the latest books, but for um, the digital books, I'm going to just have them go to my website. And then again, that's more traffic on my site. Mm, see, and I was going to ask about print books and how that might change thing because you can't do a link in a print book. So right. very interesting. What would you say is the biggest difference between print and ebooks? Do you still put, you know, jennifercarltong.com, even though it's not clickable? Do you know what I'm saying? I actually just put the titles of the books because that's mm-hmm. what uh, the industry does. So if you open up my first book, uh, there won't be a link to other books. There might, I might have a link to the second or not link the, the title. Um, it, you won't. And then when you open up the second book, it says other books by Jennifer Carl Tong. It has my first book, but not the other ones. Because if you look at uh, the industry, books will, will list the, the books that are previous to it, not the ones that are in the future. And that helps people that write in series so that your readers don't get confused about your order. Like mine are numbered, but they also can look at the front and see, you know, that they're right in order. So. Hmm. Awesome. So we kind of covered the other books by mm-hmm. situation. Um, mm-hmm. One thing that w- I wanted to mention was that if you write nonfiction, something you might have in your back matter is a bibliography of some sort, um, citing sources that you used for your book. So that's another mm-hmm. thing that you could find in the back matter. Right. Um, I've got a comment. Go ahead. All oh. right. All right, I'll come back to you, Rhonda. Um, Piper wants to clarify. She says, you don't need to pull them down, fix it, and republish. You can fix the back matter and just reload the manuscript part. It will just update the ebooks, even for those who already bought. bought. Yeah, so your book never comes unpublished. That is very true. So I've changed. I fixed my interior a few times on my books. And so all it does, people can still buy the book. And then as soon as it's approved, they they start buying the other the, the newest version of it. So. Yep, it never unpublishes. Good point. Mm-hmm. All right, Rhonda. Okay, so if you write all these things and you um, optimize them for search engines, um, mm-hmm. then when you use these things to spread the manure, as you guys like to call it, then it's already done and you don't have to worry about it. Mm-hmm. And um, search engine optimizing is changing. It's now more of a contextual thing instead of an actual like a certain keyword phrase. It's more search or intent. Um, so I'm not talking about keyword stuffing, but if you just optimize it well, then you can do it once and set and forget. So you're okay. saying, um, when I do my author bio, if say I'm Leah or I'm Jen, I can put something like Jamie Hirschberger is an author of historical Christian romance who lives in Florida. And like Tina might say, li- lived in Alaska, like put these, put these intention, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I'm looking for books by people who live in Alaska or something, yep. right? Like yep. you have to yep. think like someone who's searching for your book mm-hmm. and craft all of these things to kind of 
woo that kind of a person in, correct? Yes. 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 So have um, more of a marketing mindset as mm -hmm. opposed to like a biography mindset. Right. And I don't think that search engines go into books on Amazon right now, but I wouldn't be surprised if in the future it, they would start doing something like that because if they can find out, find an Amazon link in your back matter, then eventually they can find keywords or, you know, user intent. But if your bio is good, it can go on your website, it can go yes. on your Facebook page, it can go on the back of your book. It, sh it should be yep. consistent. We should mm -hmm. make things simple for ourselves and it's just better for people to find you too if you keep things consistent, right? Mm -hmm. So I have a question, but I think that it cannot be answered right now. I think it's probably going to be a totally like different conversation, a topic. Um, but like, I think that we, I would love to have an SEO conversation oh, yeah. and, and w I know we're not experts. I know you're the mm -hmm. biggest expert in this group, Rhonda, but maybe if we could put together an episode that would help share some resources for people that are just starting out, that would be, if you guys are interested in that, let us mm -hmm. know in the chat, or if you're listening to this later, comment on the podcast and let us know on your thoughts on that. Or for people like me that just cannot wrap their head around the whole concept like yeah. my brain just went nope and i just <laughs> walked away I was like, <laughs> well it's interesting because tina you were not afraid to jump into ads right and right. so your strategy for marketing your book has been more actually paid advertising whereas um you know doing the search engine optimizing is a different it's just a different way to look and approach things. So yeah, we should have I a conversation. To... I am making notes on our group about uh, these podcast ideas. We have, yeah, we're getting a lot of gold coming so out of this. You guys know. Yeah, I'm getting yeah. a lot of inspiration. No, I it's that new microphone of Jennifer's. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in the chat is saying yes, they want an SEO uh, episode. Mm -hmm. So all right. All right. So we have some bonus content before we move on, right, Tina? Mm -hmm. And we were talking about bonus content that you can put in the back of your book, actually. Yeah. Um, and so you had mentioned that you have some bonus content in the back of your book. I always Books. do a, a message from Jen is what I call it. And it is probably similar to maybe what uh, Leah does, but it's a much more personal. It's this is like my letter to my super fans, basically. And I will as I'm writing the book, I try to like put down notes on po I have post it's all over my my monitor right now, but things that um, I think are unique or that people would like to know, like um, how the, where the story idea came from, uh, where the character's name maybe came from, um, people that were, that inspired me. Like I, my grandfather is, was very in, influential in one of the characters of my book. And I mentioned that um, I give this background information um, the the fact that um, when I wrote my first book, that it was inspired part of it was inspired by a true story of a woman that lost her entire fortune because her husband didn't have a um a will and then i got slammed in a review like two years after the book came out saying that oh that would never happen and i'm like she didn't read the back of the book <laughs> jen um, i intentionally drank from my coffee so i would keep my mouth shut about that incident because it still oh. makes me just want to sugar baker off about it <laughs> but it's like at the point at that point you know i sugar bakered i totally julia sugar bakered <laughs> to you personally when that happened but i'm over it because i've got so many positive great uh, reviews that that person just didn't know you know about that at all so um so my special message is always like that so um if you you can get my first book for free and you can see my the special message inside there you can get the second book for free too if you uh, sign up for my newsletter so if you're interested in what that looks like you can just go ahead and download the books and then you can go back to the back and look at that and i always 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 give preview chapters for the next book because I'm a sucker for that. If I read a book and I'm like, oh, and I'm happy about it at the end. And then, oh, the next, I can read these next two chapters and I get started. I don't want to stop. Right. So I always, always like if it's a good book and I can read the next few chapters, I would say 90% of the time I get the next book. I buy the next book, I download it, or I go to the store and I buy it. Um, and that's so something I, you can put in later because of you, print on demand and even e like if you don't have the next book written yet. Once you do, do get it written, you can go back in and add that. You can, but I always kind of had them but because I have the next book at least started and or a completely outlined generally before I publish the book before it. So I at least polish up the first chapter 
or two. Now, I will say that if you read the back of um, Avoiding Esther and you read the beginning of A Calling for Phoebe, when you open up A Calling for Phoebe, it's a little bit different because I edited it, but it was, it's close enough. Like, I don't feel like I have to go in and change it. So Shell says, I, I try so hard not to read the previous chapter, but I can't help myself the preview chapter. I know. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's like, it's a great way to hook people. Piper says, I really wanted to get preview chapters, but I haven't written them yet. So, but like <laughs> Tina said, go back in and do it later. Leah says, I make fun videos on those topics. I need one. I need to do more of those once the edits are done. Mm, All right, cool. Great priorities. So yeah. we have a lot more on our outline and we are running short on time. So I don't know if we want to save this rest of the stuff for another time or just want to go through it really fast. But um, the why is back matter important? We can just go through it real quick. Don't you ladies think? Yeah, I think like, so. It can, needs to stay together. Get my sprint. It'd be fine. No, you're going yeah, first. Now that you said that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So again, like the fact that I put the preview back there, it's the whole live one on the hook that you already have them there. They've gotten all the way back there. Let's make them into super fans. So right. get more sales, get like, send them to your books. So get you more sales, send them to your newsletter, sign up so you can get some more newsletters. Uh, do uh, the personal touches like I do to recruit your super fans. Um, show gratitude to the people in your life. They're already there reading it. So, you know, Pat some people on the back that, that you love and that love you. Mm -hmm. um, Tina, what you talked about enhancing the reader experience. Let's, yeah, let's make sure we I, I mean, if you, if you look at your experience as a reader, and I think um, Shell even just brought this up, that when you've just read a book you really like and um, it's over, but you don't want it to be, that stuff in the back of the book is what's going to hook them mm -hmm. and keep them coming back to you because they want more. You've got them in a moment where they want more. So give them more. And Agreed. I just want to touch on um, back matter, what it isn't, because when I brought this topic idea to the ladies, I expected this to be about what goes on the back of your book. Um, back matter is not your blurb or your subnosis. Subno 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 <laughs> Synopsis. Synopsis. It's not the text that goes on the back of your book. Back matter is what we've discussed, all of this stuff. And um, I know blurb, synopsis, and the thing that goes on the back of your book, all of that is a conversation. I think we had once before, but we're thinking about revisiting it. But that's not what back matter is, just to clarify. Actually, next week, we're going to talk about blurb versus synopsis. Oh, so well, make knew, sure you tune in for that. that. Yeah. It's somewhere in my brain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is there anything else we need to mention before we move on? Anybody? Okay. So it is time for the feeding of the backs. And we've already decided that Ron is going first. <laughs> <laughs> and Ron, do you want to tell us what the, uh, um, let me explain feeding of the backs. It's a term that we came up with because um, when we would do our writing critiques, of each other's work in our writing group. Um, Jay, I think it was Jamie would say, well, is your back well fed? Cause we were giving feedback. And so we kind of just ran with that and we call this the feeding of the backs. And so what we do is we, we have a prompt and right before we come live on the podcast, we set a timer for 15 minutes and we just write mm -hmm. um, on that prompt. We don't have any time to plan it. We don't have any time to edit it, revise it. It's just raw. So we only give positive feedback, encouraging feedback um, in this case. So that's what we're doing. So Rhonda, tell us the prompt and let us hear what you wrote. Okay. Uh, the prompt was the sound of thunder. Similar to Jennifer's new microphone today. <laughs> mm -mm. And all of the rain you're getting in Michigan. Yes. Oh, yes. It was very inspiring to write this for sure. All right. Come here, you little stinker. Gladys reached for the tiny thistle seedling hiding behind her tulip patch. Gotcha, she sang as she held it up to the sun, gave it a good pinch, then flicked it into the wheelbarrow. One thistle down, 3,000 to go. How can you say that with so much enthusiasm? Martha wiped her brow with the back of her hand, which was covered in immaculate gloves. This will take you all day. Gladys looked up and scanned the sky. Well, I'm just going to pull one unnecessary plant at a time until they're all out. At least it starts, at least until it starts raining too hard. Mary threw her arms askew as if encompassing the whole garden. Firstly, call them what they are, weeds. She spit the last word out as if she had been chewing on one of them. 
Secondly, why can't we just plow the whole thing under and start again? Gladys fell back on her heels as if she had been smacked with a shovel. Mary, you want to destroy all this just because it's the easy way? I can't let you do that. She jumped to her feet and rushed, reached for Mary's pristine hands. We can do this. Think of it this way. You'll save tons of money. The sound of thunder snapped them to attention. The end. I really like that, Rhonda. And it seemed very full and complete. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, it was 222 words today. So there's like 40 more words than I usually get. I know. That's kind of what I'm saying. Like, mm -hmm. wow. I've noticed uh, an increase of words. Uh-oh. Jennifer has poofed. Yes. Uh-oh. I don't know what that means. Hopefully I hope that she'll come able... back. Yeah, I hope she's able to like turn the broadcast <laughs> off when it's over. <laughs> well, this, this episode will be live forever. <laughs> oh goodness. Um, Piper says she likes the ending where she's you. It snapped them to attention, and uh, Leah says that you gave a good lesson in that. Oh, thank there. You. I was thinking, what kind of a lesson can I teach today? I yeah. really, I don't usually do that, but. No, it I was like a good that. contrast between a gardening person and a non-gardening person. Because I'm like the, okay, let's just plow it all under person. Mm -hmm. um, because I would be overwhelmed and not really know what I was doing. And I wouldn't want to go through all that. And I like that Martha was the one who didn't want to do the work, which the biblical Martha was the uh, worker bee. Yeah, because I have a little bit of a problem with her sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I think oh, it was lovely. Oh, thank I didn't, you. I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> that is valuable feedback. I appreciate that. <laughs> I don't know if it's the storm or uh, what. I just, I don't know. But here I am. I'm back. Sorry. So I think the deep sound of your voice created a vortex and just. Like, <laughs> yeah. A black hole was created. Well, since we have you back. Yeah. Do you want to go well, next? I yeah. should before something else happens. So, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> So, Rhonda will be happy to know, I wrote actually nonfiction memoir. Oh, so. oh yes. And awesome. I did not finish it. I'll have to explain to you where it's going. So, when I was a little girl, I was afraid of storms, but I wasn't alone in this fear. My mother was absolutely petrified of storms. Just the sound of thunder was enough to send her flying out of bed and racing down the stairs to our basement, dragging me and my brother in her terrified wake. But not my father. Most times he wouldn't even get out of bed. Be it thunderstorm or tornado warning, he just grumbled something at my mother, then rolled back over. As a child, I was worried more for my father than my own safety. What would happen to him when the tornado that was surely on its way to destroy my house hit and he was asleep in his bed? Need some work. <laughs> During one of the more violent storms, as my memory recalls, my concern for my father outweighed my own fears, and I raced back up the stairs to beg my father to shelter with us. I was frantic. I was crying. Surely the love of his little princess would break through his hardened exterior and he would relent. But he didn't. Instead, he picked me up and carried me to the window. Lightning flashed across the sky, and in my fear, I buried my head in his shoulder. Softly, my father, my father counted in my ear. One, two, three, four five. Boom. Thunder struck in the distance and I shuddered. Five, my father said. What's five times ten, Jenny? Even while scared, I couldn't pass on a math challenge. Fifty, I said. He nodded. Fifty. That storm is still fifty miles away. There's no reason to be afraid. But what about when it gets here, I said from his shoulder. Jenny, look at me. Go on, look at me. I lifted my head. Do I look frightened? Three, two, one. Oh, so good. Oh, I love that. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring it around to uh, when life hits. What are you looking at when um, storms hit? Are you looking at your father or are you looking at what's happening around you? And I also want to like go a little bit more into touching on, you know, I'm going to guess that there's some sort of trauma in my, my mother's childhood that like, cause she is very, very afraid of storms. And she, and I'm going to talk about how when you have someone you, that is, love that you love and that you look up to that is afraid of something it like instills it in you and so i'm gonna i'm gonna really like deep dive into this so anyway that's what i wrote today oh it's really good i like that thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. i appreciate it and i love that little jenny couldn't resist a math challenge even when she was scared <laughs> me too <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> awesome love piper that. says oh i, I did 
She says, I didn't realize it was 10 miles away. I always thought it was one. That's what I was always taught was 10 miles. My grandparents told me that too. So, but that doesn't mean it's right. I mean, it's, it's wives tale. So who knows? You know, I always learned that it was 10 Mississippi's away. Oh, one Ooh. Mississippi, two Mississippi. Like that's Ooh. how we counted to make sure we were counting an actual whole second. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't Shell know how many miles that is. <laughs> Shell says, I have a storm trauma story. Might have to write that later today when oh, I have yeah. some time. Yes. And tag us in it. We would love be that. Awesome. Because oh, I was going to encourage Jennifer to use this as like a newsletter story or put yeah. it on her website or something. Spread the manure. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm going to do. I want to read the rest. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Thanks. Okay, so I'll go next and then we'll have Jamie go last. Okay. Little Jimmy sat on the end of the dock with his fishing pole. His feet were dangling in the water as he watched his bobber doing what bobbers do, bobbing up and down with the almost imperceptible waves. Occasionally, a speedboat with a skier behind it would go past far out in the middle of the lake, and then a short time later, the waves would grow bigger before dying down again. It was a gray, drizzly kind of day, but Jimmy didn't mind. He had his twins' baseball cap on and the light blue windbreaker that had the rainbow tape holding the zipper. Besides, everybody knew the fish bit better when it was gray and drizzly. Sally, who was visiting her grandma at the cabin next door to Jimmy's grandpa's, came out on the dock and sat down next to him. Catch anything? she asked. No, not even a nibble. What you using for bait? Leeches. Better than worms for northern, she said. Yup. They sat in silence for a while, listening to the sound of the water lapping against the pipes holding the dock. A loon called from somewhere nearby. Jimmy closed his eyes. There was something haunting and beautiful about the call of a loon that moved him deep in his gut. Hmm. Do you think God smiles when loons call, Sally asked. I think he closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and feels it deep in his gut, Jimmy replied. Hmm. Yeah, Sally said, I think you're right. They sat in silence again, each lost in their own thoughts, Jimmy studying their distorted reflection on the surface of the lake. Are you gonna, aren't you going to get a pole? He finally asked Sally. Don't need one, she said. I'm happy just sitting here and listening to the water and the world and contemplating. Contemplating, Jimmy asked. <laughs> Sally often used big words Jimmy didn't know, but he didn't mind. He always learned something when she was around. Thinking, she said. Oh, yeah, that's my favorite thing about fishing, Jimmy said. What are you thinking about, Sally asked. Well, Jimmy said, if God created the loon, and they sound so haunting and beautiful, what do you think God sounds like? Sally put a finger on her chin and look, looked up at the sky for a moment. A loud, blooming, booming clap sounded, seeming to travel across the surface of the water, followed by a flash of lightning. I think he sounds like that, Sally said, like the sound of thunder. Jimmy nodded, his heart seeming to swell inside him as he reeled in his line. I guess we better get inside, he said. It's too bad. I love to be out in a storm, Sally replied. Jimmy decided right then and there he was going to marry this girl one day. Aww. Yeah. Oh, I Aww. love that. I love that. Very sweet. There's so many things I love, but like in a nutshell what I love about this is that as humans, we look to ourselves to see God. Right. And so as an innocent child, he like, he's having, he's experiencing what he experiences at the sound of a loon. And then to him, that's, that's what God would experience too. And I don't think that's wrong, you know, because we are created in his image. Like mm -hmm. we don't understand God. We don't completely can fathom him, but yet we can, see p bits and pieces of him. I just think that's beautiful. I just really love that. Thank you. Thank for you. Writing that. Sh uh, Shell says, Tina, you're amazing at writing children. So I true. Piper's yes. Followed by Piper. You made a romance despite the use of leeches. <laughs> uh, uh, leeches are romantic. Uh, they're uh, suckers. Right. <laughs> uh, Tina, that was so sweet. So perfect. Leah says. Thanks, agree, guys. Agree. I love the rainbow tape on the zipper pull. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. love all of the visual detail that you put in your writing yeah. to make the characters come to life. Nice work. I remember Thank when you. my daughter asked me what God sounded like, and that just mm -hmm. took me right back. Mm -hmm. And what did you say? I said, well, I don't know. Let's imagine. Oh, mm -hmm. good answer. That's good, too. That's a good answer. Mm -hmm. Thanks. 
Because I think maybe he sounds different to each of us mm -hmm. in a way. Agreed. Mm -hmm. I always told my girls that when I was little and I couldn't sleep, I would just talk to him about my day, like as if he was my friend sitting there. I would, and of course, I was doing most of the talking as usual. <laughs> and um, I always knew God's voice because he would be saying something to me that I wouldn't have said to myself. Like I'd be complaining about someone or something that happened. And then all of a sudden the voice in my head would say, yeah, but do you remember when you blah, blah, blah. And I was like, <laughs> so that's as a little girl, that's how I started to learn to hear God's voice. And the more I did it, the more like he didn't have to say convicting things. I just knew his voice. So that's why I always tell right. my girls too. the more you talk to him, the more that you'll, that you'll hear him. So. It's just almost like you guys are like setting up for me to read my sprint. Anyway, what were you going to say, Tina? Yay. I said, it's kind of like when my daughter calls me on the phone or my mother always laughs because when, when she answers the phone, when I just called her yesterday and she said, hello. And I said, hi, it's me. And she goes, oh, it's you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, you know, somebody intimately, you don't have to tell them who you are anymore. Yeah. That's right. so nice. What a nice thought. Jason says that one of his characters is scared of storms. So it made this interesting. Also showed a more vulnerable side to a normally tough character. That's what's so great about sprints. Seriously. Like, even if you only write in your world that you're writing right now it'll help give you something deeper always because yeah great okay jamie i can't wait to hear yours okay i totally went away why okay i am not afraid Joni pulled the quilt up under her chin and nudged sissy with her left foot sissy did not move she hadn't even heard the thunder even though it had been loud enough to shake the timbers she used her big and second toe to pinch the soft flesh of sissy's calf and to Joni's relief, her sister scooted as far away as the narrow bed would allow. Sissy is all right. I am all right. We are all right. I am not afraid. Another loud explosion threatened to cast doubt into Joni's mind, and she squeezed her eyes shut against the noise, wondering why God had not had the good sense to provide her with something similar for her ears. All closing her eyes did was activate her imagination and send her to a place in her mind where terrible things happened on the sound of such loud, on the heels of such loud explosions. Good. There was not much in Joni's life to attach the loud noises to, other than stories of war in other parts of the country, like where Matthias had gone off to and where Pod wanted to go, but had been told he was too old to do so. The judgment of the Lord was the other explanation Joni had. She'd learned of this explanation for thunder through the pinched lips of Miss Prue, who'd ruled Joni's Sunday school class with a swift rod and a mean temper. Joni squinched her eyes even harder closed and tried to imagine instead what her ma would have told her about these bursts of booming terror, or what pa might have told her if he'd come home sober enough to hear the noises himself for a change. Ma's kind voice and sweet smell were more imagination than memory at this point, but if Joni worked really hard, she could still manifest them for herself, seeing and feeling and smelling her way back into her mother's warm embrace. Joni imagined her now laughing softly at the trembling form in her lap, shushing and soothing. Soothing with what words, Joni wondered, trying to unclench the tight grip she had on the quilt, trying to relax into the sense of comfort and ease her imagination was trying to provide for her. Look around tomorrow, her mother whispered. Look and see how green everything is. When you see how the storm has revived the earth, you will certainly see God's hand of blessing in the storm. A hand of blessing, or a proclamation of judgment. These seemed to be the two paradigms between which Joni was expected to choose as she sorted out in her mind what it meant to be a creation of this strange and all-powerful God who was said to have loved the world so much, but who still permitted things to happen that scared little girls, things like drunken paws and thunderstorms and mamas who die before a little one has a chance to get all grown up. The thunder boomed again. Joni tried to imagine the thunder was a call to all the little seeds in the earth, a command for them to send their shoots up to the sky. Joni began to imagine it was a call to her as well, a command to be the mother to Sissy that she herself had been deprived of. Is that you, God, speaking to me in the thunder? She murmured. She fell into a deep and dreamless sleep before the thunder rolled again. Uh, I love that at the end where her art changed, her attitude changed, the seeds started calling out to her. I was so hoping for that. Mm -hmm. I love that you told us that her mom has gone is gone without telling us her mom is gone. Like you, you are very, very gifted in that. Like the show, mm -hmm. not tell. Very, mm -hmm. very gifted in that. Thank you. Yeah. 
you know, it gave me a whole, um, like, little house on the prairie kind of feel. Mm -hmm. um, like, I could see, like, I used to watch that show all the time, and I could see them in the bed with their little bonnets on, you know, and <laughs> the, and the um, so I had, like, this great visual through the whole thing, and it was just really, really good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Leah says, great detail, toe pinching, really great sentence mm -hmm. structure, emotional and touching, mm -hmm. agreed. Shell says, wow, Jamie, just wow. Yeah, Thank so. you. This little girl, um, she deserves her own book. I don't know what will happen mm -hmm. to her, but she is um, growing up in like Civil War Appalachia. Mm -hmm. And um, because, you know, there wasn't just um, plantation owners and slaves during the Civil War. There was a whole right. white poor class that yep. had a real hard time during those years. And I feel like it's underrepresented in literature. Um, I feel woefully undereducated to write much about it, which I guess is why I haven't tried to give her a whole story. But she is very real to me. That's awesome. I have a question for you. Um, okay, so I think reading Pilgrim's Progress as a child sort of form formed this in me. But it seems to me like um, you have a character or two in all of your stories where their name is related to their personality. Hmm. Like say Miss Miss Prue reminded me of a prude. Mm -hmm. So do mm -hmm. you do that intentionally or is that just me? Uh, yeah, Prue sounded that? like a prudence, just like a the sound Prue makes mm. your lips kind of nye, 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 kind of a person. <laughs> and so that name just like flew out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jason says the whole showing, not telling information was so good. The visual was so good and really captured my attention. Agreed. Thanks, guys, I appreciate it. I love feeding of the backs. It's my thing. <laughs> I just like to add that I will totally read that book. Uh, oh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, me so, too. Let's, um, now that we're all done with that fun part, let's go on to the what's next portion of our podcast. And I'm going to start with you this time, Jamie. Go What's back around. next? I have to figure out how I'm going to market my novel. I actually wrote a novel. Um, a short story writer wrote a novel. What do you think about that? What is it going to be like? Who knows? And honestly, I'm not even really sure what or what to do with it, how to approach publication of it. I'm considering doing pitch wars to try to find an agent to maybe commercially publish it. I don't know. So still, I am in this limbo world of um, where's my writing career going. I've got a lot of stuff going on in my personal life that's making focusing over here really hard. So I just want to say thank you to the people who have been uh, keeping me accountable for my office hours and showing up to this podcast because you guys have really been an anchor in the storm of my life. And as I'm moving forward with this writing career, like I just really don't know what way to go. So everybody praying would be awesome. You got it. I think you're rubbing off on me, Jamie, because when you said short story wrote, short story wrote a writer wrote a novel, I totally heard the tune of Video Killed the Radio Star. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jennifer, do you want to go next with your WhatsApp? No, I don't want to go at all. <laughs> We're not sure on time. We could just skip me if you guys wanted to. But... No, we can't do that. All right, real quick. Leah says she's always praying. And Thanks. Jason says his what's next, working on details and is writing more this week. Does anyone have any ideas on how I can work on that? Ugh. Um, that'd be a whole other topic too. Right every uh, day. Right, right every, every day. day. Which I shouldn't say that because I've not been doing that. Piper says next, start book four and figure out the story if it can be finished in one book. Okay, so I have taken kind of an extended leave. Uh, if, if you guys have been watching us um, or listening to us, I've had a, a few family members in the hospital this summer, not COVID related, everything else related. Um, my mother has um, Alzheimer's and um, my father takes care of her and I help as much as I can. I have three children that I homeschool, which we're getting ready to ramp up for the new year. And I just haven't been able to get back into it. And um, I am not upset about that, but, which I guess maybe we should talk about this more at least when we have more time. But um, I feel like I think I needed this break. I've also been dealing with headaches really bad. Um, I went to a massage therapist yesterday and got a treatment. And so I'm feeling a little bit better. I'm going to go again next week. So that will probably help because when I'm in a lot of pain, then I get down and I don't, I'm, I can't work. And so that's been going on with me too. So um, 
my what's next. Um, I'm just going to worry about getting healthy right this next week. I do need to finish editing my book, but um, I'm, I, I am probably taking off hours, office hours f- until after I get the homeschooling going after Labor Day. I know it's not what anyone hears and I might get um, uh, lambasted for that, but that's where I'm at right now. Yeah, but it's like your, your writing lives. career and your life and you have to do what's best for you. Yes. So I'm behind you 100%. Oh, thanks, Tina. Just want to clarify, like you're saying your live streams that you were doing at eight. And I'm really not working at eight either. I'm doing other things. I'm getting other parts of my life in order that fell apart while I was publishing and editing and doing all that up to this point. So uh, like you guys know, we're in the middle of a a remodel. My husband just got laid off again, but this time like for good from this company, it wasn't like a temporary layoff. Um, So uh, time to move on to another company. And so now he's between, which is good because we can get a bunch of stuff done while he's off but that just means that i have to be doing other things too to like kind of because we have the time to get things done i need to try to work and do that so so yes i'm not doing live streams right now i I do plan to come back to them i do plan to come back i'm not leaving my writing career you guys know because i've I've crossed the finish line many times this is not the end for me i just need an extended break for my and i feel mentally better because i'm not putting so much pressure on myself right now makes sense yeah. Alex says her what's next. I'll be listening to the podcast after the fact. So I'll be thinking about you all. Aw. We'll be thinking about you too, Alex. Alex. Uh, next. Uh, pa- Leah says next work, work, work. Hoping to finish the edits before September 16th. Going on a short girl trip with a friend. Aw. That sounds like fun. We need a girl trip. Yeah. yeah. I think in November. Do another retreat. Yeah. What about you, Jamie? What's next for you? We already did me. It's oh, Rhonda we're waiting on. Oh, okay. Well, I'll go before Rhonda, and then Rhonda, you can finish this up. Um, I, too, have not been writing. Um, I was experiencing this situation where I was sitting down, opening up the work, and staring at it, and my brain was just noping out. Mm-hmm. It was just like, nope. That's and me. I was wasting, like, I was spending, like, hours a day just kind of trying to be in this manuscript, and, and I wasn't getting, like, the house wasn't getting clean and nothing else was happening. And I had all this pressure. So the more, the more days in a row that this happened, the more pressure I was feeling. So then I was, like, feeling frozen in the other parts of my life, other things that I have to do. Mm-hmm. So I just decided that I was going to not open my manuscript. And I was going to find some kind of incubation activity to do during that time. Um, and so I got a new cross stitch project and it was, it's complicated. It has like 30 colors and I'm just letting my brain rest. Um, and it feels really good. I feel really good about it. I feel really peaceful right now. Also, there was some stuff at work. So now I have to schedule, change my schedule all around. Um, so I'm just giving my, my brain time to get used to my new work schedule before I figure out my new writing schedule. So that's how, that's kind of where I am right now. And like Jen, I feel good about it. So. All right. What's up? All right, Jen, Rhonda. Okay. Rhonda. Well, uh, what's up for me is I'm finishing the uh, edits on the book I've been working on for um, the last two weeks. That'll be done today. And then I'm getting back to my Vela project. And so I'll update you on that next week. Um, but I just have a comment for Jason. Um, you can write your details on index cards and they're easy to go back to it when you want to fill them out or remember what they were, or if you need digital, um, make note cards in Scrivener for the exact same thing or experiment with a wiki page or plugin on your blog to keep all those details straight. We get a whole episode awesome. on that. I'm excited yeah. about that wiki plugin. I use, um, plotter, P L O T T R. And that's, it's like a um, substitute for a physical index cards for me. Mm-hmm. And I, and you can move them around and they're color coded and you can have a timeline for each character. It's really cool. 
Alex mm -hmm. says, thanks for being good examples of taking care of yourselves. Yeah, well, we are certainly not the kind of people that are going to be like, it's type A or no way. We understand that, you know, it's a study of one to see um, what your life and your writing career is meant to be. You're created a unique individual um, and God is, you know, encouraging you to be you. He created you to be you and not to be somebody else. So to hold yourself to somebody else's standard of um, even what makes you a writer or not is sort of ridiculous because you're the only you. You are the arbiter. Uh, your true north is what is important. Agreed. And I just also have to add that I still am a huge su a supporter of the statement button chair. I know that if I want to get work done, if I'm going to be um, productive, it's I just have to show up every day. But I also know right now that um, I need a break. So it's good to do to know both things. So mm -hmm. all right. Know yourself. Okay, if we're all done, then I will say that this concludes this episode of the Christian Indie Writers Podcast. Until next time, may your pen be prolific, may your deadlines be met, and all of your words honor Christ. Bye everyone. Bye everyone. Bye.